and I'll never back down In the middle of the ring is where I lay the back down Against all odds, I will always prevail So when you step to me, it's like hell in the cell Greetings and salutations, this is Christopher Daniels. I'm talking to my main man Delzinski right now. Any video game show, any video game channel, any YouTube channel called Vintage Shizzle is indeed hashtag Daniels approved. Yo, alright guys, it's Delzinski here and welcome to We Talk. It's a We Talk weekend as per usual. And I did say that the professor was going to be back this week but apparently he's extended his party he's invited adam rose round now to join him and mike tinay and let's be honest that really is party time all the time so he's standing and i'm welcoming him back because he's with us each and every week so to speak now yes it is smack talks paul how are you doing mate i'm doing well i don't take all this <laughs> Are you not on a part-time plan like Brock Lesnar or Weeds, for that matter? No, I'm there every single week. Excellent. Cool, cool. So, yeah, we're on the road to Extreme Rules, and uh, it's kind of been a bit of a, a bit of a come down to reality, really, to be honest, for the WWE, because, um, you know, we were all very excited. We were loving the way that WrestleMania went. WrestleMania was such an amazing event. So exciting, and then the roar after that was was pretty damn awesome. And then it's kind of dwindled a bit and kind of slumped a bit downhill. So uh, we're going to talk about the build uh, of Extreme Rules. We're going to review the match card. We're going to give you previews uh, and predictions as we run down the matches um, of our feelings and opinions. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit as well about um, a couple of other bits as we get towards the end of this week's We Talk. So, let's talk about it first of all. Let's just ask the big question. Extreme Rules, the build, what have you thought of it? I think it's been pretty poor. It's centered a lot around one match in particular. And a lot of the other stuff, it's kind of been pushed a little on the back burner. And when you've got the two going on at the same time, I think that's kind of hampered it a little. Especially when Triple H and Steph aren't there. It's just been so um it's been so dominated by the authority and like you say, even when they're not there, it's still all about the authority. So it's kind of I, I kind of I, if you if we're gonna review the entire match card um shortly, but when you kind of start talking about those matches, you're gonna kind of think, Well, where was the build? Because it kinda of got lost with all the authority stuff. It doesn't matter if we jump from big show to uh you know to Kane uh to Seth Rollins it's just it just all comes back to the same source and that's the authority and I kind of that's where I kind of got a little bit bored of it um yeah I mean have you enjoyed the the constant which has been the authority I mean we saw it a hell of a lot over the last two roars the one from London and the one uh just uh just this week's gone um good not for me. I think I enjoy the authority at times, but it's now at the point where it's getting pushed down my throat so much, and it is every other segment that you just you kind of it drains on you, and you sort of get a little bit sick of it. So, to me, I think maybe it's run its course. Maybe it's time that they sort of broke away. Keep J and J with Seth, but I don't know. Give the authority a little bit of a backseat. Well, the the trouble is is. Doesn't it feel a bit like the Orton route again with the whole uh, with your champion where Triple H, it's not that he doesn't believe in Seth, but questioning him, you know, saying that, well, Kane knows what's best for business, but you clearly don't at the moment. You've got to start thinking about what you're doing. And it feels, again, a bit of a flashback to when Orton was champion, where it was always questioning uh, his championship reign. It feels like, you know, um, it's like deja vu all over again with with Seth now and uh, that, that's not really that good. That's not great. We've seen something like this before. Why does it always come across that the authority always want to, I wouldn't say bury, but I would definitely say, um, you know, question their current champion. Why is he not being held? Um, I thought when he would win this title, the authority would be, you know, singing uh, his praise because he's the future. But it hasn't really come across that way since he won the belt at WrestleMania. Exactly, yeah. You've hit the nail on the head there. It's exactly the same as what was happening with Orton. And I think 
I don't know when that started. I don't know when the authority started, but it's maybe around sort of a year and a half, two years, because we had the whole Orton and Brian situation, which was kind of the same way that this has been booked with Orton sort of being reluctant to face certain people and worried about losing his title, or always looking for someone to get involved and help him get over. So it is, it's the same thing that's gone over for the last two years, and that's maybe why it's starting to drain sort of watching it now. Yeah, and it doesn't feel like they've really got any direction with it. It's like one minute you think possibly they're going to push down the route of Triple H almost kicking off with the champion where it could lead to something, but then it always resorts back to to playing safe. So like even this week, what was Triple H's purpose on Raw? I mean, he just sort of felt like, oh, he's back. And then he was almost involved in 90% of the segments, but yet the segments really didn't do an awful lot it was just this whole ongoing issue with Kane and the trouble is so much heavily featured um, Kane during this whole course yet Kane is involved in in the main event as uh, what is he the Guardians of the Galaxy I don't know what what, what, what they billing him as the Guardian of the Gate that's the one the you should gu- just call him a gatekeeper <laughs> exactly and why couldn't they just bring back, uh, you know, Batista dressed as someone like, uh, you know, Drax or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> What's he guarding the gate from? Well, that's the question, isn't it? I guess. Uh, I mean, we probably talk about that in the uh, in the uh, review of their match. But what what exactly is he is he guarding? Because no one's really meant to be coming out. Orton's in the uh, in the cage. Yeah, well, I think <laughs> one says he was going to pin him anyway, so. Are we trying to hint here that there's going to be some sort of uh, potential where they look like they're going to stitch up Rollins? Um, this is the thing that I've been kind of thinking about a little bit. Is and I know maybe dipping in a little bit to that match, but there's a feeling of uh, the whole screw job where they could position the belt back towards Orton. They're trying to maybe drop that hint that, oh well, you know, I'm getting tired of Seth Rollins. Um, you know, running his mouth and being such a coward as a champion, and they might screw him over and give the belt back to Orton just to teach him a lesson. But I really don't see that happening. But that's the way that I feel that they're trying to tease it now. Yeah, I can't see that happening. I think if it does, it's going to be exactly the same thing. It won't be long before Orton starts questioning, you know, how are you going to help us win this match? It'd be interesting if they just had someone that was a champion like Lesnar where you wouldn't get that. And it was like someone like, you know, we don't care if you go up against our champion because our champion's going to beat you. He's the best at what he does. And, you know, he's going to win at the end of the day. He doesn't need that outside interference. Well, that's the feud that I think if they'd kept it going towards Extreme Rules, kept Lesnar around, everybody would be loving uh, the build towards this pay-per-view. This pay-per-view would be awesome because Lesnar Rollins was what we were all kind of looking forward to because it's heel versus kind of heel with Lesnar you know he's you know he never really really gets full heel heat but that's what I would have liked to have seen and I think because they then decided to do the uh the annoyance of writing him off TV again um they lost all their momentum by doing that by pushing him away and now we've got Orton and I think I don't want to question Orton I think Orton's done a good job for the build of this pay-per-view I think the whole thing with the RKO has been good but then we have to start thinking about all of the the issues with the the curb stomp and I mean this is all detracted from other elements like the other matches on the card I mean we're just talking about it now and we've probably spent already you know um, nearly close to 10 minutes just talking about the build being the authority. <laughs> it is, we're falling into exactly the same trap. Because there's nothing else really to think about. Yeah, we've got things like Seamus going on with uh, the Kiss uh, me ass, but it doesn't it doesn't jump out at you and say, oh, that build was amazing. You know, it doesn't feel like it's separate, separate from um, all the other elements. It doesn't feel like anything jumps out at you and says, oh, do you know what? Actually, besides this authority stuff, this has been pretty good. And I don't get it. I like the way Seamus has been brought back. Don't get me wrong. But, I mean, I'm not really invested in someone having their ass kissed, to be honest. Yeah, it's not something you're really screaming to see, is it? No, and I don't... (laughs) This is the funniest bit, is I don't necessarily think that we're going to see full pay last cheek, to be honest. I don't think we'll be seeing this. I think it's just going to be the short job. Yeah. It's it's not Vince style. (laughs) Yeah, there's no pulling the pants down. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, it's just, oh, it's just, 
it's that it's gone backwards again, which is kind of frustrating to be honest. After all, all of the excitement of WrestleMania and um, uh, something that's really probably made it go backwards is the fact that we're going into Extreme Rules. And when I think of Extreme Rules, I I, I sit there and I think to myself, you know, I want to see, um, I just want to see every match extreme. I don't really want to see gimmicks, but this pay per view has been peppered with gimmicks and what's your view on the whole gimmick match thing i mean we've got i think i think i counted five five gimmick matches so we're not saying they're extreme rules but we're saying there's some sort of prop or some sort of stipulation which is added in there um and you know to be honest all matches should be be extreme rules and they should just position a prop or something in the match they don't have to tell us what that is um, it just feels like, oh, we're going to make it look different. So we'll tell you that this match is a street fight or this match is, a, you know, a, a cage match. It's just, eh, don't really it, like it. Yeah, it, it, it's gone from extreme rules to gimmick rules, like I said before, you know. There's, there's gimmick matches in there, but they're not extreme. They're not what you would associate with an extreme rules pay-per-view. There's no table match, uh, ladder match, TLC even. So... Those are the kind of things that you would ex- be expecting when you think of extreme rules. But maybe one of the problems is when you've got things like Hell in a Cell pay-per-views and TLC pay-per-views, then they kind of keep their matches for that and they don't want to overdo it. But I would expect, well, I would want to see a lot more matches I would really class as extreme in an extreme rules pay-per-view. Exactly, and I think... That this pay per view, if you're going to have it every year, which they do, and if you're going to have it drop after such a big event like a WrestleMania or something, you've really got to you've really got to go full out and make it extreme. And so you've got to, uh, they won't, but they should. Uh, they they they've got to look for things like a bit of color involved in this pay per view. I mean, they did do the flaming table once, uh, but it, it, it's spots like that, it's moments like that, it's props like that where you do take it to that other level. I don't really understand, and I, I know why, because of the way this company's gone, but I don't understand why for one night of the year, they can't go down the ECW route and go extreme like they should. I mean, I, I, I'm telling you, I don't care about the, the little kiddie audience, but you would still get a massive amount of draw for that. And, and you would still get the teens and people watching it anyway. They don't have to yeah. go. They don't have to go full at ECW, but push the boundary a little bit. Well, that's the thing. It's they're scared to do it. And when we were talking about them taking away the curb stomp, it just it's ridiculous when they would take away that kind of move because they're scared about it hurting someone. And maybe it's the same kind of thing with Extreme Rules when they've got people like Daniel Bryan who's injured at the moment and they're scared of sort of losing people from the roster to an injury. Maybe that's why they don't want to go full out Extreme Rules. But you can't have a pay-per-view called Extreme Rules and promote it as being extreme and then just have it where the matches aren't extreme. I mean, the chain match, even even that, it, let's name it for what it is. It's a touch four corners match. It's not really going to be too extreme. I mean, I can see him locking in an accolade and things with a chain, but I doubt this will be the extreme, extreme rules match that you want to see. The trouble is, is, is Rusev has underestimated this. I think I've mentioned it before. He's fighting the leader of the chain gang. He is. Cena's got previous with the chains. <laughs> but you're completely right. You're spot on. I mean, how on earth is that match going to really take it to the next level? How on earth is that match going to going to uh, elevate this feud as well, for that matter? I mean, it's just a, an annoying gimmick. When they even announced it, I thought, a Russian chain match, you know, it's, what? <laughs> well, that's the thing. If if they've got a chain tied to them, it's going to limit like the move set and things. That's Cause... fine for Cena. That's fine. <laughs> well, there's only them six moves or so. <laughs> but you know, you know, you don't want to hit like a suplex and things and land on a chain because that's obviously going to do you some damage. I mean, the only kind of match like this that I think I enjoyed was was it a Brahma bull rope match between the Rock and Triple H? I oh, think yeah. That's what I remember. And at least when you've got a rope in there, you know, if you land on it, it's not going to do you as much damage as landing on a chain. So I don't know why they've gone with the chain. It's probably to do with Cena and the chain gang. But if it ends up with Cena using the chain, sticking it around his neck and coming out rapping next week, I think I'll be okay with it. Yeah, I think everybody will be okay with that. It's, And I mean, um, the build for their match has probably been 
focused on a bit, but then it's, I think it's kind of been taken away with the whole, um, you know, the John Cena US Open Challenge. I mean, I think that's, that's overshadowed the match with Rusev. It has, but at the same time, I think Rusev's kind of been boots. I don't know if I would say well, but smartly, because he's had that first loss. And now we're seen on SmackDown where it looked like he was maybe about to lose again to Ryback and he would just exit the ring and then end up getting himself disqualified using the chain. So I think that's maybe the best way to go with it. You don't want him just to carry on beating people and things. Maybe question yourself like that and start of relying on sort of just getting the job done at the end of the day and disqualifying yourself, anything like that. And it keeps him away from Cena in the time being. So they're still building it. They're building it well, and it's leading up the match. But I would just question where it goes from here afterwards. I've, I've got to think that it's possibly getting close to closure, but it's going to be interesting because you know where does where does someone like a Rusev go, and if you know whoever takes that belt away, because um, I think Cena's doing a great job of elevating that belt, um, doing the open challenge, and just touching on that. Did you notice on a, I don't know if you saw this on WWE.com. But they were hinting at matches that Cena could have. And I think they listed guys like RVD. Um, he was on the list. But most notably, <laughs> this is funny. Uh, they put Kurt, Hang- Kurt Angle on. Kurt Angle? Who the hell is that? Kurt Angle? Who is that? Don't uh, remember Kurt. <laughs> I don't know who that is either. Um, Kurt Angle was on the list. The Olympic gold medalist. And I think everybody would love to see Kurt Angle rock up. But... Interesting that they did that, considering where Kurt Angle is based these days. Why tease something like that? Yeah, it's interesting to see something like that. It's kind of weird to see them teasing that match, though, with Cena and not Rusev. Because I think Mm. Rusev and Angle would be more of one that people would want to see. It's just, it's very strange. I mean, they had, they did have the opportunity to re-sign Kurt Angle. But at that time, when he was negotiating with TNA... Uh, from what I understood, WWE wanted him to go full time, and yeah. he wasn't willing to do that. That's what I was under the impression of as well. I was heard that he was in talks with them, and it was Triple H that he was speaking to. It all seemed to be going well, but at the end of the day, it's just the schedule that's the big problem from, especially with Angle's age. Um, but I'm not surprised that the sort of bringing him up on WWE.com because we've seen it in the past, especially with people like Jeff Hardy, and I think. They don't mind mentioning people that's in TNA if it's a big name like that and it's someone that's known for all the time in WWE. Yeah, it generates that buzz, doesn't it, a little bit in terms of the, the older school audience going, oh, yeah, I'd love to see Angle come back, you know? Yeah, totally. And it kind of like puts the feelers out there and just sees what kind of reaction that gets. And then if it does get a good reaction, then it maybe shows them, you know, maybe people do want to see Angle, but should offer them this more of a sort of less dates kind of contract and just bring them in part-time because it's what people want to see. We know it's going to generate some cash. Let's go for it. Well, I sort of got this feeling that um, the the reason why they offered him the full-time deal was just to be like um, a bit, a bit as, 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 the, as the revolution would say, to be a bit of a douchebag <laughs> um, to, because I think they offered him that deal because uh, he actually left them and at that time when he left them, he was saying that it was because of his neck injuries and stuff and he couldn't couldn't work the full-time schedule. Um, but clearly then he just went and dipped down to TNA when I think we all thought he was going to retire. So I think that was a bit, of a, a bit of a cheeky one from the WWE saying, you know, well, when you left us last time, you know, we thought you were going to retire. So if you're coming back, you can do full-time schedule. That's, the, that's, that's my logic with WWE because they always remember issues from the past and they always like to kind of maybe stick it to you a little bit if you did ever try and do them wrong. Yeah, I think so. I think maybe if he was to come back, maybe it was just a case of, you know, work full time, show her that you're committed to it, show her that you're in good shape, show her what you can do. And then if if it works out, we'll give you that contract that you want and we'll go forward from there. Definitely, definitely. And even someone like RVD coming back, that would I would like to see that match against Cena. But it's uh, that's all been teased, but none of that is coming to Extreme Rules. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit... It's a bit disappointing. I mean, the only other thing as well that before we get into the card, I was going to mention to you uh, is, well, I'm going to mention two things. Do you think you're going to see Bray Wyatt at Extreme Rules? I think so. I think they've been building up to something. And I don't 
really think they need to carry that on any longer. So the promise that he's been cutting, it's still unknown who he's talking about. I mean, I've got a couple of suspicions. I think maybe Brian could be one of them with the things that he said. I mean, to give you a list of the things that he did see, he says that he was going to expose that person for being the weakling that they are and that, you know, the strength isn't everything that it seems. And I think a couple of weeks ago, did we mention that you talked about taking away um, or targeting the person that they love or something that they love? So that could be Brie Bella or it could be the Continental Championship. Hmm. So you're trying to say that uh, Brie's going to move away from Nikki and we're not going to hear any more, come on, Nikki, chants <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I, I'm dreaming of that day, to be honest. Uh, I was doing the, uh, I was doing my simulations uh last night for that match uh, Nikki Bella versus Naomi and I, I just think I, I, I think they need to add that in 2K16 the, uh, the come on Nikki because that's all you <laughs> ever hear it's just like every match it's just like can't they do any better with Brie because it's just wasted <laughs> oh, it's like when sort of AJ was cutting that promo and they just totally ruined the whole thing uh, it's, just, it's just a bit awkward um yeah, I mean that's that's something for a different time. But but back to Bray. Um, yeah, I mean that that could work. But do you think that possibly because we've seen it before, we've seen Brian versus Wyatt before, um, are they going to go there? Well, I wouldn't mind it to be honest. I think the match that had the Royal Rumble last year, I think that was a really good match. I really enjoyed that. But you mentioned this before about Bray Wyatt. It's something that he gets put in these matches and it never progresses. It's just like a one-off kind of thing. So. Mm -hmm. I would like to see it again, especially if it was sort of dragged out and put over time as opposed to just a one match and then we'll move them on to the next person. And I think with Brian's injury, it would be a good way to sort of have maybe Brian appear at Extreme Rules ready for the match and then either break costs him the title or he just basically attacks him and just causes something that takes Brian out of action for the next couple of weeks, which again, it kind of put Brian puts Bray in a bad situation because the other person's not there so again he's left by himself with not too much to do but kind of put himself over with more promos like he has been doing but it gives Brian some time to then go away take that bit of time off again get healthy and then when he does come back that match is ready and waiting for him well I think it'd be perfect for him in terms of giving him some time because they need to buy him some time at the moment by the sounds of it and uh, they they don't really know what to do. They've been so cagey about this match. We don't even know if it's on yet or not. So we are going to review it during uh, uh, this talk today. But we don't we don't know if it's on or it's off. So we'll have to wait and see. I, 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 the only other person I can see Bray maybe interrupting, because a lot of people are saying it was Ryback. And, but how are they going to do that? Because Ryback's not even going to be there. Um, but could be... I find it interesting that on Raw, they did have Roman Reigns face... Uh, well... Well, Bo Dallas interrupted him, and mm. I kind of think they used Bo Dallas to hint little things here and there. Like I think they used him against Sting to to hint that he might be at Dallas, uh, Texas for WrestleMania. And then I kind of think the tie with with Bray. What I would very much like to see, and I think we've talked about this before, and uh, someone actually um, sent me a picture of um, on Two K Fifteen of. Uh, they they created a, a version of Bo Dallas um, almost as such as the Wyatt family, mm. and I I really think that you could maybe utilize something like that. You know, he Superman punched Bo Dallas. Could you not maybe then use that sort of tie that these two have got to maybe you know revamp Bo Dallas and get him involved, and maybe the, that could be the feud that kicks off with uh, with Roman Reigns if they're going to go down that route. Because Roman Reigns is really sitting in a, a crap position at the moment. He, you know, he should be asking for a, a match with Seth Rollins, and he's he's way down the card. He's gone and faced, you know, the career killer that is the Big Show. So, uh, it, to me, if they want to do something and refresh it, and they also want to give Bo Dallas a new lease of life, they could utilize the fact that he did Superman punch him on Raw. And uh, and then tie that in a bit better into the Wyatt feud, and I would at some point align Bo Dallas with Wyatt. I'd just do it. Yeah, I would like to see that. Before I get to that though, do you not think you're clutching at straws when you see Bo Dallas coming out with Sting? Kind of hints that you'll be in Dallas for WrestleMania. It's, I mean, it's just the WWE way, Paul. They just love to do these annoying little things like that. Why would you pick Bo Dallas then? 
Well, I can't really, <laughs> I can't really say it, but I'm saying, you know, Extreme Rules is in Chicago, so you're not expecting CM Punk to turn up, are you? Well, <laughs> uh, no, most definitely no. Although, although I'm not going to lie, when Bray Wyatt cut that first promo, the amount of comments I think I had on my video of CM Punk, he's talking about CM Punk. I was like, damn it, he's gone to UFC. <laughs> Jesus, get over it. Uh, That's the thing, the lights are going to go out during Punk's first match in the octagon, and Bray Wyatt's just going to turn up there. That little lantern's going to be in the middle yeah. of the ring. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, but, well, it, it, could it happen? I, I don't think so. I think we're clutching at straws there. But what you're saying there about Bo Dallas, maybe align himself with Bray, I think that would be a good way to do it. I think the Bo character has gone as far as it can, really. It's not going to go anywhere else from you. It's not going to go up anyway. It's only going to go back. So... I don't know. I think maybe assign him to be a new member of Wyatt's new cult. Yeah. Maybe get some other people in there as well. I wouldn't mind Eric Rohn going back to it as well because he's not really doing anything at the moment. He's still wearing the mask and things. So maybe he misses those days. <laughs> oh, Eric Rowan. I mean, he's a genius. So why does he wear that freaking mask? So surely he's got worked out now that he's not a member of that family anymore? No? Well, maybe... You know, you're still in the impression, you know, you're still related or something? I just think, again, like the, the, we're, we're kind of going off a bit on a tangent, but the, 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 the dropping of the ball with someone like that, who went, originally was quite hot when he first came out. I mean, they were utilising him at like Survivor Series in the main events. And, and I mean, again, he just sort of just thought, Meh. they've just kind of gone away from him. I mean, what is his segment on Raw? It was, it was to sit next to Heath Slater whilst he got RKO'd. I mean... Well, that was the thing. Even then, I thought when Slater says he was going to accept Cena's challenge and Rowan got up and walked away, I thought maybe he's going to answer Cena's challenge first. Yeah, yeah. But then nothing happened with that and we've got a different opponent. So I don't know what they're doing with him. I, I, I think there's so much room with Wyatt. He's the, he's the guy to, to really get. If you're going to build a, like a monster stable, then he's the one that can do it. But... They, they really need to take a few risks. They need to push the boat out and they probably need to, you know, go re-get some of their guys back who, who supported him. So like your Rowan and your Harper. Um, and Bo Dallas would just easily fit the mix anyway because he's, I mean, uh, yeah, he's got this whole Bo Leave gimmick, but he looks like you could turn him into that sort of Wyatt look. You could easily do it. And I, I just think, I think it, that would give Roman Reigns a proper feud. And if you wanted to make Roman... I'm going to say it, look strong, then toppling this new faction that Wyatt has got, or that's this new, well, this new imaginary faction that we've, we've, we've created here on We Talk this week, which sounds kind of awesome, WWE Creative Take Note. Um, but if he did do something like that, at least that would give Roman Reigns uh, some sort of room to manoeuvre, whereas a feud with the big show is like watching paint dry. It is, yeah, it's... It's the big show problem. He just does this with everyone that he works with. It just kind of drags everything down because of the pace of it. So I think if we want to have Bray Wyatt just put together a new faction, Bo Dice would be ideal to put it into that. I think it's great for his character just to give him something different. I mean, he's already got the facial hair growing, so maybe that's in the plans. But I think that's the best scenario here for Bray. I hope so. I mean, I... It's either it would be nice to see maybe Brian. Um, I just think that possibly WWE go down old routes if they do that. But at least then they're renewing something that they knew kind of worked. They just botched the ending with the whole him joining the Wyatt family. Um, but at least they know that kind of works. That that feud did go. Um, and then if it's Roman Reigns, it doesn't. Then it, it kind of opens the door for Roman Reigns to focus on something because I don't understand why Roman Reigns would even be interested in facing the big show. He's, he's got bigger fish to fry. I mean, he should be picking up a few with like, if he wanted to, go and feud with Triple H. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't seem logical or worthwhile for Roman Reigns. He's got better things to do with his time than keep dealing with the big slow. So, uh, it's, I don't know. I mean, it's, we kind of sound quite down in the dumps about this, but I'm sure there's going to be some good matches on the card. So let's actually go through it. Let's just let's, let's run down this card. I'll tell you what, me and my headset at the moment, it's like I'm having an ongoing wrestling match as we speak. I've nearly knocked it off my head about four times. 
You did last week as well. I know. It's like it's like a trademark thing now. Me just smashing my head. Head. You need up. to just like tape it on there, like when Kurt Angle had the wig. <laughs> I need to do something because every week at the moment it's like um, I, I feel like at any moment I'm just going to get taken out, like Michael Cole did. It's just uh, Michael Cole. He's back, unfortunately. <laughs> you had to bring him up. Yeah, I know. I know. So, so let's 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 talk about something. I hope it's going to be more positive than uh, Michael Cole. Um, the pre-show, which shouldn't be on the pre-show, but we'll have to say it anyway. Tyson Kidd and Cesaro versus New Day. Um, it shouldn't be on the pre-show. Let's face facts. Belts should not be on the pre-show, in my point of view. What do you think? Yeah, I think this should be main main card, but they they kind of put the tag team titles on the pre-show quite a lot, so. They do, they do, and I, I don't get that. I, I, um, I think that kind of sucks. I'm loving what they're doing, just to mention on the prime time players this week on yeah. Raw. The the hurrah, 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 and scared the shit out of Seth Rollins was quality. <laughs> that a great uh, little backstage promo, like one that they previously cut, and that was exactly the same thing, like what they've been doing the last couple of weeks, where they sort of talk trash about the tag teams. So again, talking about the Puerto Rican bullfight, as asking where they are, and then. They also went and took some more shots at um, Cesaro and Kid, so I'm absolutely loving that. I think they've got they've got a big future in terms of the tag team division. I can see them being the next tag team champions, like further down the line. But I'm surprised they're not putting them out there on the show itself to actually cut promos, and they're still giving them these sort of like pre-recorded ones because I think they'll really connect with the crowd the way that they're going across. It kind of reminds us like the DX kind of parodies and things. Yeah, it does. So. It's, it's a lot like that. I think it's like something that's great for connecting them with the universe. So I would love to see them just push them to and just really get them out there and just see how the crowd reacts to them. Don't you think, don't you think this just 100% proves how much they missed a trick with these two guys? And, and particularly for me, Titus O'Neil. Like, I know sometimes, well, I just think Titus O'Neil felt awkward in some of the positions that he was in because when he's given the opportunity, like he is at the moment, to, to just be himself, he's... he's brilliant he's so entertaining but i remember you know looking back since his singles time him being really awkward like him struggling with promos and i don't think he does struggle with them i think he struggles when he's put in scenarios he doesn't like whereas this i think he's been told um you know with darren young to just go for it be you yeah totally and i think this is a case of you know two people that work really well together and they sort of bounce off each other and it just adds so much to it when you've got two people that can work together like that. Oh, it's just so I, I kind of I was what reason why I brought them up was I was kind of thinking, uh, are they going to maybe be involved or or should they have been involved? Should this been um, you know a, a three way dance between the tag teams? Is um, it too early. I don't know. I think there's quite a few tag teams when you think of um, Sin Cara and Kalisto as well. So yep. I think these teams will get the time. I think. Maybe it's a good time for the tag team division at the moment. I mean, we're so much used to seeing the Usos constantly. And now we've got Kid, Cesaro, New Day, Kalisto, Sin Cara and the primetime players. So maybe things are starting to pick up again. Again, All they've got to do is get the Ascension sorted, to be honest. They really, oh, they really, they really messed it up. They, I the mean, detention. The, the detention? <laughs> it's like they're in detention because they're going nowhere. Uh, it, they just ruined, they just so ruined such a a dominant tag team. I mean, I'm not I'm not going to say they're the, they were they're anything. I don't think they're anything special to be honest. Even on NXT, I just thought you know they're just powerhouses and they just blitz the competition. But the way that they just killed them, I mean, on the main roster is it's bad. I mean, they they even jobbed. I think when we were um, at WWE on Raw, uh, two two. Kalisto and Sin Cara and the, I mean this is this is like these two were having major feuds back down in NXT and it's just like you know sort that out get them in the mix because that's just another tag team to spice up the division if you do well with them um, but the, going back to Kid Cesaro New Day now do you think the primetime players might rock up here and maybe try and get involved a little bit, try and start a little bit? And if if so, because they you know they're taking shots at everybody, is it going to be on uh, Kid Cesaro or is it going to be New Day? And obviously New Day kind of trying to develop his heels. And do you think maybe that this could be a chance for the New Day because they could pick up the belts here um, and then go into a feud with the primetime players? 
Um, but then what does that do with Cesaro and Kidd? Because obviously I think they're doing a good job in the tag team, but if they lose the belts, I think that momentum kind of just goes whoop. Yeah, I can't see the prime time players getting involved. I mean, I really wasn't expecting to see the new gay day get so- a title. S- s- sorry? <coughs> Excuse I'll, me? I'll, I'll try that again. I really wasn't expecting to see the new day get a title match. Fact. But I think now that they've embraced the crowd's reaction and turned heel, then they work a lot better. Fact. But they're going up against one of the best teams in the WWE at the moment, in my opinion. And I just love the mix of strength and agility that they bring. Is it leads to some great tag team matches. Fact. So I don't know. <laughs> I I could see I couldn't see the New Day winning the belts unless it was down to some underhand tactics, like we've seen on Raw when Woods grabbed Sin Cara's leg, and that was that kind of just made him get counted out and it ended the match. But of course, if that happens on Sunday, then the titles don't change hands on a count out. So we'll still have Cesaro and Kid as the new champions. So, I don't know, I would keep the belt with them. I I think it's too soon to kind of end that, because they do work so well together. And although the New Day are picking up pace now, I don't know, I still don't see them being at a point where they could be tag team champions. But who knows, it could go anyway. Exactly, exactly. I mean, that yeah, like you say, the New Day are gathering momentum, and um, I think they've really got to go down that sort of... Um, preacher route as well if they can with them like you know they you know because no one really gets what new day is all about but i mean they, they finally it's finally clicked that if you were going to do anything with these guys you should have had them as a heel because to have them as a face group and they're already all uh i think they're already faces but you know they're already faces to be honest at the time and i don't think doing what they did with them made gave them any elevation whatsoever but finally it's clicked with them and then you look at the other side of the table and you've got kid and cesaro pretty much pretty much picking up the tag team division since the Usos have stepped away a bit. And I, I think that it's been for the better. And I, I love, obviously, Cesaro and kids, like you say, the power and the strength of Cesaro and the agility of Kid. Um, I think that ultimately, at some point, Cesaro will go his own way. But I think during this this match, um, it's going to be interesting because if, if they wanted to give the New Day a big opportunity... I would say at the moment, this is it. Um, I think, you know, when, you know, the whole thing strike while the iron's hot. Um, but I don't really want to see Kid and Cesaro drop the tag belts. Well, I think that's the thing. Sort of, I wouldn't mind seeing the New Day win it because I think it is the time to sort of push on and sort of give them a chance if you're going to because it failed so much when they brought them through and the crowd just sort of went against them. Then... Now they're kind of, they're still against them, but because they've kind of embraced that sort of reaction and they've become a heel tag team, then it works better. And if if people are liking Kid and Cesaro so much that they drop the belts, it's going to add a little more heat to them, having the tag team belts. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe this was the plan all along, just to have them sort of always become a heel tag team. Mm, I don't know, I think they just botched it. <laughs> well, I don't know, because... That whole gimmick, it's like, you know, how is that supposed to get over in the first place? I mean, surely they knew that was going to get a bad reaction. Mm, we're talking about Vince McMahon here. Exactly. The master of coming up with ridiculous things. Yes, he's a genius at times, but other times he just goes way off base. And uh, I just think this was one that he just completely cocked up. I mean, uh, th- this should have gone down the sort of nation sort of route in a way, I I thought. That was been best case scenario. But they went down this New Day route and they're finally kind of, you know, sorting it at the moment. I think I think that possibly this could be their moment. But prediction-wise, I am going with Kid and Cesaro. What's your prediction for this one, Paul? I'm going to go Kid and Cesaro. Cool. But... Fact. Fact. Yeah. Uh, so we, we're... we're 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 both agreed on the first match. That's that's good. That's good. Sometimes me and Weeds don't even make it that far. That's <laughs> <laughs> a good start. Next one. Next one. I'm not doing them in particular order. I'm just kind of going off of what possibly could be the order. So uh, Ambrose versus Harper in a street fight, and this one on paper could steal the show because you can imagine this being a really uh, intense. A hard-hitting battle between these two. In terms of build, just to touch on it, I don't really think it's had that great a build. They've kind of just, you know, 
chugged along a little bit with this one. But I think it's good. But I think that both of these guys have been, like we've talked about, lost in the mix with the entire authority stuff. And and for Ambrose particularly, someone that was so high up a little while ago, he's really got lost. I mean, he was focused on the IC belt and he's kind of fallen away from that. Same with Harper, to be honest. It was almost like they were doing a filler job for the IC belt until they, they made their minds up who they wanted with Brian being there. So how do you think this one's going to go? What do you think in terms of the match? And uh, what do you think of their build? Do you think they have been lost? Well... Yeah, that's the thing. There's, the build of this has been pretty much non-existent, really. It's hardly had anything. But I think when you look at these two, the two people that are willing to do anything that they can to put on a good match, because we're seeing Harp and the ladder match where he took so many risks and things. And then Ambrose is someone who is exactly the same. I mean, he'll take all the risks that he can to try and put on a good show and make for spectacular moments. So what we're seeing at WrestleMania with the ladder and sort of going through it, it looked dangerous as hell. I thought he was like really badly injured, but it just shows how much he's sort of willing to put his body on the line. And I think in terms of a street fight, then it suits them perfectly because you never know what's going to happen with this. And one thing that I would love to see is if the build on what we've seen on Raw, where they sort of brawled into the crowd, mm. but then sort of go like we used to see in that attitude era and that attitude sort of hardcore title matches. So it doesn't just end wants to get to the edge of the crowd it sort of goes backstage and even outside i would love to see them just sort of brawling out in the street just with all hell sort of breaking loose and it just it gets them over as being sort of lunatics who would do absolutely anything to try and win a match and i would just love to see that it's something that we haven't seen for quite a long time now and because it's something that you don't see very often it's something that just makes for a special moment when you do well, I think with Harper, it's probably kind of that person where Ambrose kind of met his match in terms of, you know, quite frankly, just wanting to just brawl it out. Um, he's not quite the ticket. Um, so it is like a perfect match for these two. And yeah, I would I would 100% love for them to go out to the crowd, go past the crowd. Um, it, it kind of amazes me that they don't do that a, a bit more often when they have these these sort of matches with two guys that are willing to, to go full on and go all out because... You know, we've seen we keep seeing backstage segments, but this is the sort of thing where you could really utilize the backstage areas and go out to the to the car park, the parking lot. I always remember back in the Attitude Era, you know, going in the parking lot, they'd be fighting out there. Um, they can easily arrange all this stuff. They can corner off a little area outside the arena. It's it's easily doable. It's just how much and and you know what? Speaking about this event in general, that would that would make this match. That would that would make you remember this match if there's a moment like that. Whereas it was just oh they brought in the crowd. So yeah, I, I completely get it. I, I would love to see that. Um, I think that I, this isn't going to be <laughs> this isn't going to be your technical your technical match or anything like that. I think we're going to see. I reckon we'll see things like trash cans and stuff like that coming out the woodwork. Uh, maybe a kendo stick or two. Um, I, I hope if they want to do anything with this, this one could be if they were going to, but they won't because I know that they won't. Uh, they, they could use a bit of blood in this one. This is a sort of match where it could do with it because they're both smash mouth. But uh, yeah, I really hope this one's just as physical as it could be. Yeah, totally. I just want a complete mental lunatic street fight. But the thing is about Harper is his, his size doesn't really matter. He can fly. He can do... He can do whatever he likes. It's just, that's what's amazing about him. And I, that's why I really like Harper. And I, I was a bit disappointed probably about a couple of weeks ago where he kind of just felt like he'd, uh, he'd gone. He, it was, he, was, he was gone down the Rowan route of not being utilised at all. And it's glad that they've kind of managed to bring that back a bit with, with getting him in with Ambrose. But with Ambrose, you've probably got to think, is he, is he, is he where he should be? Because he's not in any belt pictures he's he's kind of I, I don't know where where is Ambrose going well hopefully through the crowd and outside when the street <laughs> fight but it's a good question because Ambrose I still don't think he's won on pay-per-view since like payback or something last year so he's bound to win at some point hopefully this is the time but wants to do win this match whoever wins I don't really know where to go from here 
Is it something you could see them maybe carrying on to another match? Will this be like a longer feud? Or do you think it's just something that they've thrown together because of the way that um, sort of Ambrose was put through the ladder by Harper? I think they could go longer, but they've got to really get some storyline behind it. There's no, like you say, there's no storyline. It's just you put them through the ladder and they've continued. And yeah, they had a little bit of a brawl prior to it, but it's, it's nothing. there's nothing there to make this personal. There's nothing there to make this have any sort of substance to, to keep going. And that's that's the trouble with these. And that's probably pr- kind of the trouble sometimes with the WWE. A lot of these feuds are a little bit uh, just, just mismatched or, or slung together. Um, something's got to come out of this to do, to do that. So whether it be that he gets so insane or he gets so lunatic that he does something that costs him the match, um, it's got to be something like that. And maybe it could be just tied together with that, the fact that they're both nuts and they're trying to outdo each other and, and it just gets to a stage where something goes wrong in terms of one of them trying to take a risk and it just doesn't pay off. But then you can continue the storyline saying, well, I was, you know, I'm nuts. And I, I don't think we get to see Harper talk enough. Yeah, he, he doesn't really get the chance, does he? He seems to impress when he is on the mic. But even... I think it was SmackDown where he had a segment backstage where he was just sort of staring blankly into space. Uh. And then <laughs> when he did finally speak, it was just to like grab hold of Mercury and say, you know, you broke my concentration. And he doesn't really get the chance to show what he can do because I think he's really good on the mic. He's like, the promos that he has cut when he's been given the opportunity, they've been really good. So I think maybe they're missing a trick by not giving him that opportunity. Yeah, the interaction between these two would be great. So... Yeah, it's kind of it's got something to it this this feud, but it needs something to really ignite it. Possibly it's going to be this match. So, what's your prediction for it? I'm going to actually go. I might think we're going to disagree on this one. I'm going to go with Harper. Um, I'm going to go with Ambrose, but I wouldn't be surprised to see something crazy happen where it takes them both out, and maybe mm. it just ends in a no contest. Like they'll both get in a car and just drive head on in each other. That's, <laughs> that's how nuts they are. <laughs> that would be interesting. That would be interesting indeed. So, so we're going. We're going. We're going our separate ways. You've gone with Ambrose, and I've gone with Harper. Right. Next one. Oh dear. It's Roman Reigns versus The Big Show. I don't really know. There's not. There's not an awful lot we can say about this. This has had quite a lot of TV time, um, particularly when they're in London. Uh, with the old taxi cab and all that sort of stuff. But it's not really something I'm looking forward to. I personally, just to just to put it out there, think that Roman Reigns should steamroll through the big show unless they still have nothing for Roman Reigns and that means that this feud's going to continue. Yeah, it's just a filler match to just give Reigns something to do. I mean, for big show, it may be a last man stand match, but it's just really another match because he's so slow and he takes so long to get up. It's like a last man standing match from every single week. I'm not sure he's going to be able to get up from the uh, for the for the you know the ten count. Just anyway, in general, even if he gets knocked down slightly by himself, he's going to struggle, isn't he? I mean, it's it's just the big show problem. He's he's a it's big a big giant. problem. <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge problem. It's a giant problem. It's just I don't know. He's you want him to be that big, nasty bastard, but at the same time, he's because of sort of being older now and a lot slower, he's not as impressive in the ring as he used to be. I'm going to say, uh, let, uh, let me just say something. Big, nasty bastard. Yeah. Big show, baby. Exactly. <laughs> but it's two sides. It's like just flip a switch between the two, like the heel and face thing. Uh, it's just it's just all wrong like it's like, he's, uh... his character's just been totally ruined like he should he should be a dominant sort of giant that just comes out and just knocks out everyone but i don't know the they have that problem where because of his age and things they don't want to make him too strong and knocking people out left right and center because he's not going to be the guy that you kind of push to be your champion anymore do you remember? Do you remember what? Do you remember when the great Carly first came in and how they build him, like how dominant he was when he first came in, and he even was, you know, crucifying the Undertaker at the time. Do you remember yeah. that? I mean, that that's the trouble, isn't it? If you ever look at all these giants that come through, uh, they just get to that point where they give up 
keeping him as like a monster heel or or some sort of beast where he just you know just comes out from time to time and just kicks someone's ass you know he's not that agile he's not gonna be able to do very much but you know they they they, they, they get bored and then they start tinkering and that's what they've always done with the big show and every time they've tinkered with him it's got got really worse because you know when you look at back when he first came around as Paul White uh, he was he was like he came in and he had that whole you know the giant and it was it was and then he and then it started molding into the big show it's still fine but then over the years they've just thought you know, oh, he's just a gimmick because you know he's he's a big guy and uh, that sells in terms of the size. Um, so we've got to make sure that he, we can utilize him a bit more to sell that. And that's when they start dropping him in the face route, and uh, it just goes pants from there. It just a uh, just sort of example of of how giants just don't giants should feel like monsters, like and they should be really you know they should be that dominant, and they never are. Anymore. Well, that's, that's the thing. If you like, think back to like the way that we see highlight packages for like Andre the Giant, and he always like comes across as like a huge giant that's like this unstoppable force. And yet, in years to come, how are you going to kind of show that impression of the Big Show to like future generations? It's like he's, he's this huge unstoppable force that's become stoppable, and he's tried doing like jokes and things and crying, being a baby. You wouldn't you wouldn't see that with like someone like Andre the Giant. It's just a completely different thing. It just killed his character. That's the trouble. Andre, Andre was just you know there, there was the reason why the Hulk slam was so much because it was like this guy was unstoppable and uh, you know and then someone did you know put a stop to him. It's just Big Show's just lucked out big time. I mean, I think I think we've kind of voiced already uh, that we think this is going to be pretty much a no contest um, in terms of who's going to win it. Um, possibly yes we might get Bray Wyatt involved in this to spice it up a bit but Roman Reigns all the way yeah totally Roman Reigns all the way Superman punch and everything maybe he'll maybe he'll knock the giant back into the big show but I don't know chance will be a fine thing Um, next one Nikki Bella versus Naomi Divas Championship match match actually changed from Paige to Naomi to let Page film her film with some I'm not sure what that film is to be honest but um, kind of really botched storyline again you know having a win in London gets cheered then gets taken out and then they just switch it um, but gives a good chance for Naomi to show her stuff it does yeah it's a good sort of refreshing change to have someone different in there and I think Naomi's someone that should come through with AG and Caitlin and she's never really been given the same kind of opportunities that they did. They give her a slight run, but they never sort of really give her like the full momentum to sort of go on and become the Divas Champion and just have that kind of little run where you could see how she sort of copes with it. Whereas AJ and Caitlin, they both had that chance to become the champion and sort of go on from there. And now they've gone, they've retired, but Naomi's still there. And it looks like maybe because of those sort of names go and then they've kind of had to go with Naomi and I think it's about time that she does get that chance she was paired with the main event player you know who's that Brodus Clay well that kind of says everything really what what everybody loves everybody loves Brodus Clay I love he's gone (laughs) oh I think that's that's something else though that they need to take away from Naomi. They need to get rid of that music. But that ah! <laughs> <laughs> totally because especially this new persona, you want something different in there. It's just a little bit more refreshing. But it's just I don't know if you, if you're going to repackage her, like go for it. Just make her go an all-out heel. But at the same time, because she's going up against Nikki, who is a heel, it's kind of heel versus heel. So I don't know. I would say you don't know who it's here for, but I want Nikki to to lose this title as fast as possible. So I'm all Naomi in this one. Well, uh, you know who I'm going to be cheering for. Who's that? Come You're going to be cheering Nikki. for Nikki. Come on. <laughs> I can't help it. It's just so annoying. It's like, why is she just a cheerleader? I've got, I've been beginning to develop this thing with Brie Bella where I just find her so pointless. It's just like, oh, you could have done so many good things with her because she's, you know, partnered with Daniel Bryan and you just missed the trick every step of the way and she's just kind of fallen into this trap of being a, a cheerleader for her sister 
And I don't like that. I think I think Nikki's done a great job as a heel. Uh, but like you say, with Naomi, very good opportunity to step up. And, uh, you know, I did hear that it, this was all planned for AJ Lee, that AJ Lee was going to be the one that turned on Paige and, and then, then we had the Divas title match. But that would definitely be revisiting, um, you know, the same you know same divas constantly time after time so it's nice it's nice to have a a new option and i think like you say maybe it's time to 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 give that belt to somebody else i mean nikki can go and develop a feud with with someone else if they bring up charlotte or someone like that then you could uh, you don't have you could get Paige back in the mix to face naomi you could get charlotte flair up against the bellas that's a real excellent contrast i think in styles where you have the the, the you know the women's wrestler and then you have the, the you know the face of the divas because that's kind of what they've become now mm-hmm. um i was watching i don't know if it's wrestlemania 24 or 25 but how far have these lot these two come on because uh, they were they were just you know helping out the hall of fame induction Round about that time, and I think they were released after that as well for for a bit. And then a Cena must have just said, "Hey, hey, I want some of them," and got them back in the mix. <laughs> um, but but I mean, they've they've come on quite a lot. I mean, they've really been pushed in our. I don't know if this is a good phrase to say. They've been pushed in our face a bit. I don't mind that to be honest. But you know, uh, they have been brought forward quite a lot over the years. They have. They've, they've improved. I mean, I still don't think they're great. No. But I think they've got a long way to go. But because they have become the kind of face of the Divas division, and you can drop the title from them. They don't have to have it. And they can then go on with someone that gets brought up. I think if you brought up like a Bailey kind of character, yeah, then that would be great to have just like the balance kind of belittle her and sort of put her down. And you can have that feud going on separate in the title match, where if Naomi picks up the title and something like that does happen, then... Naomi is the champion. It's then got a ready-made sort of feud coming back for Paige when she's finished with this movie. So that gives you that kind of feud. And in the meantime, someone that I think is also improved and that I wouldn't mind seeing going up against Naomi would be Cameron because they've both got history. And I think she's come on quite a way. So it would be good to see just them two get the chance to sort of have a good match on pay-per-view and things and also keep the Bellas in the spotlight with the whole Total Divas thing, but going up against someone else. And then that gives another person an opportunity. And that person's Eva Marie, yeah? Well, I would I would love it to be Eva Marie. You know how much of a big Eva Marie fan I am. But I think she's going to be too busy training now with Brian Kendrick. I heard that she's going to come back with like a monster heel gimmick. She's going to have like Three Six Mafia, Mark Henry style music. She's going to be seriously gangster. She's going to be representing... Yeah, I don't know if that'll work. <laughs> I mean, she's more likely to come back as a new Rey Mysterio. What are you trying to say she's got to wear a mask? Well, I'm just saying, you know, she's so athletic. I mean, Naomi's being put across as this amazing athletic superstar, but even Marie's just going to knock them all out of the park. I don't know what to say to this. Is this some... Do I detect a hint of sarcasm in there? Sarcasm? What? What? I, I mean... I, I don't know all that rumor of her coming back. Is, is, I, I don't know what I don't know what we're going to get. To be honest, it'll but. be interesting to see if she does improve. And by improve, I mean two moves. She's the master of the headlock. What more do you want? Um, another move. Oh, okay, fine, fine, fine then. Uh, anyway. Who wins a match on a headlock? Even Marie. <laughs> she won a match. I, I I don't know. You tell me. You're you're the fan. She hasn't learned how to pin someone yet. Well, yeah. Sure, she's used to being on top. Oh, oh dear, oh dear. You're in you're in one of those moods today. First, you're calling the new the new day new gay, and then and then you then you're dropping this bombshell. I never said anything. <laughs> I'm sh- I'm sure I've been misquoted. <laughs> Heel smack talks, everybody. Heel smack talks. That's what we've got today. Um, I, I mean, one thing that we just have to say before we move off of this one is that Naomi has got probably one of the most devastating moves in professional wrestling. I was actually looking at this move quite quite a lot, and I decided that I think possibly this would be an epic move for, for, for my Dashin Delzinski to have in WWE 2K15. I, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's the ultimate humiliation, isn't it? Well... <laughs> You could go stink face. 
I, I could, I could, I could, but I, I pride myself on hygiene, you see. Oh, right, of course, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, anyway, this, this finishing move, I mean, really, to drop the belt by just getting someone's ass in your face? It, it's not what you want, is it? <laughs> it's not. It's the ultimate humiliation. But Nikki could receive this at Extreme Rules. That's where we're going with the WWE. Oh, man, because this brings us on really good to the next match. But what's your prediction? So you're going Naomi? Um, or are you? I don't know, to be honest with you. I can see Nikki still winning it, but I would prefer Naomi to win it. So I'm kind of on the fence. Um, oh, dear. Uh, I'm going to go Naomi. Okay, so I'm going to go Naomi as well, because I think that it probably needs someone to freshen it up, and it gives us a new a new person to look towards in the Divas division. So... Yes, we're both going with Naomi, and talking of arses, well, the next match is definitely all about the arse, and two that I don't want to see, to be honest. It's the Kiss Me Arse match between Dolph Ziggy Ziggy Ziggler and uh, the Hamus that is Seamus. So, <laughs> I've very much enjoyed Seamus coming back to the WWE, but I don't really want to see his arse. Yeah, it's not something I'm really looking forward to. I don't know why. Why is it a kiss me ass match? It's it's not like he's been going around telling everyone to kiss his ass for like weeks upon end. Cause it's the ultimate form of humiliation, fella. Ah, oh, right. What we've been told, he's not just gonna beat Dolph Ziggler, he's going to humiliate him. Why don't he just give him the same haircut? Well, it's Ziggler. Yeah. Why doesn't he just shave his hair and make him look like Seamus? Then humiliation at its best <laughs> that, that would be a perfect way to go I mean I don't get it I mean I like I kind of like the new look of Seamus I don't know if I would say look but you, like, you're going to be sporting this in your next video yeah <laughs> Oh, I, I might try it yeah but I don't know I, I, I guess what I should say is I like the new package of Seamus and that he's more <laughs> of a sort of <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> totally wasn't the right word <laughs> Right, I like Seamus' new character. Good. So I think it works much better, the fact that he's now a brute and he's sort of just going out there and just beating the crap out of all the little fellas. Mm. But I don't know, I still think you should drop the fella thing. But instead of dropping it, they've kind of added to it and just made him a little more Irish with the whole me arse and everything. So I don't know, it's it's what they do next to him. If they keep on sort of progressing towards the, I'm going to be a brute, I'm going to beat people up. Or if they just go back there, you know, we want to make sure people know that you're Irish, so we're going to do everything that we can. You'll be backstage drinking Guinness. You'll come to the ring and Mrs. Doyle will be your manager. I don't know. I think they're on the right track, but it depends how they play it out. I think they've got to kind of stick with it. It's kind of gimmick gone mad. I'm just waiting for him to rock up with a new faction of Finley and Hornswoggle, but I don't know if we're ever going to get to see that. But it's just, it's just, it's sort of, Seamus is, I actually think Seamus' return has been really good. I, I like the way that he's come back. I like that he's You like his package. I, I, look, you said that, not me, all right? Let, let, let's, just, let's just make that statement perfectly clear that Smack Talks, on record, said that he likes Seamus' package. I think we need to edit this. <laughs> Uh, well, we'll have to wait and see. This is like going seriously uh, to to an X-rated version. Me and Weeds haven't been there for a long time, Paul. So we've got to be careful with this. But back to the match at hand. Dolph, Ziggler and Sheamus. And I like, as I was saying, I like Sheamus' new gimmick. I think that he's doing a good job as a heel. And I think it's the flashback to when he first came in. And everybody... I, I You know, he's, it's pretty easy for him to generate heat. But as you say, that whole... Uh, trying to make it really abundantly clear that he's, you know, he, where he's come from. It's not necessary anymore. We 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 get it. I mean, he's pasty enough as it is. He's just, uh, he looks like the Michelin Man. It's just, it's just not. Uh, I I I don't really get that whole thing with them. With that whole trying to ram that gimmick down your throat. I just think make him look like a badass, and you you can do that without having him grow his hair and spike it, make him look like a great white shark. But you know, it's, do you know, it's just it's not necessary for this guy. This guy's big. He he like he, he's physical. I think Seamus puts on good matches, so I think this one's going to be a really good one. And obviously, he's going up against Ziggler, who always entertains. Um, but the fudgy 
gimmick match is just the disappointment of it, really. It is, yeah. I think, to be honest, it, it's not really going to take away from the match itself because I think it's just going to be a case of after the match, then the other person has to do it. Do you think maybe that's the case? It will be, it will be. I mean, to be honest, once you've seen Vince McMahon's ass, you don't need to see anyone else's. So, You think it's that good? It, well, it, it's been good for many WWE talent over the years. Well... <laughs> So I don't if think you say so. I, I don't think you can get better than that. So once once you've seen Vince's, you've seen it all. So I, I don't necessarily need to see Dolph Ziggler's or Sheamus's. But I think the match is going to be very good. I think that Ziggler's going to do a good job. Um, if I'm going for a prediction, do you know? Do you want to know what's difficult about this prediction? What's that? Can you see either of them doing this? That, no, that's what it comes. I mean, comes I can down see to. Ziggler getting knocked out. And then sort of going through without sort of being willingly participating in this. But I kind of see Ziggler win the match and then Sheamus going ahead with it. Oh, it's such a dodgy, dodgy match. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with Sheamus. Yeah, it's gotta be Sheamus. You can't have Ziggler win it. So poor Dolph Ziggler is going to kiss Sheamus's pasty white ass. Oh dear. Oh dear. Anyway. Next match. Well, is this match on? It's Daniel Bryan versus Bad News Barrett. Is it actually happening? It's still up in there, isn't it? They haven't really committed to it. I think they just want to keep Bryan's name on the card just to kind of improve it a little and just keep people guessing back and see it maybe getting called off at the last moment. It could very well tie into what you said earlier about Bray Wyatt. So he could actually come out and then just get attacked and then that pretty much gets him off. And then... And then, and then if they do do that, um, we mentioned that before we came on that Adrian Neville really has been pushed, um, you know, to the sky. Uh, it's it seems like that Neville should be on this card. The amount of times we've seen him recently, so they could actually have that. Bad news, Barrett. Then maybe cut a little promo saying, "Oh, you know, he should be in the Continental Champion. He's got no competition, no one to face." And then Neville comes out and uh, you know tears the house down because I think that would be a phenomenal match to watch him and Barrett. I think you got again that power versus athleticism. So um, I, I, I think if they want to do that and Brian's not ready. I'd be more than happy to watch that. I think it's a good alternative. Yeah, totally. I think it's been a big surprise that he's not been put on this card already because, I mean, I guess kind of the problem that he's had is that he's gone up against so many different people. It's not been like one set person. So he's kind of been put into this match now with Barrett on SmackDown where he was in a tag team match. So it looks like maybe they're setting it up so if Brian can't compete, then they could bring him in to face Barrett. So maybe that's going to be what we'll, I might end up seeing if Brian's not cleared. And I think in terms of Neville's matches, every single one that I've seen him put on, he's put on some great matches on the main roster. And it's great to see that they haven't kind of held him back and limited his moveset because some of the things that he's been pulling off has been absolutely amazing. I mean, the sort of 450 splash that he hit from the barricade, yeah. like that's something that I've never seen, never expected to see that. It's absolutely amazing. He just gets the crowd going and I think, on the pit view, that's exactly what they need in between some of these matches. Again, it definitely represents that the it doesn't matter about how big you are in terms of everything. It's it's you know size doesn't really matter when it comes to to being a performer as long as you can do the moves. To be honest, the smaller guys always are. They always come across more entertaining half the time. Apart from your beasts like Lesnar, I mean, I'd more than happily watch um, you know matches between Brian Ziggler and Neville. Probably much more over the guys like your Roman Reigns, so it's it, it, it it's a good thing they've they've really done a really good job with Neville. And uh, like I say, it's a surprise that he's not on the card. So if Brian and Barrett doesn't happen, I think that could be the replacement. If it does happen, um, who do you think's gonna? What do you think the fallout's gonna be? Because potentially, if Daniel Bryan is injured, this could be the perfect angle to get the belt off of him as well. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I think because of Brian maybe sort of suffering from this concussion and things and not being 100%, it's a great sort of opportunity to take that belt away from him. And even though they're kind of using their big names to elevate the championships, I think if you take it off Brian, it's not going to hurt the championship itself. It's it's more about how the championship and the champion itself is booked as opposed to the name that's holding it. So as long as if Bad News Barrett picks up the championship, then he still gets that kind of 
spotlight and he's able to like just have the time to put on the matches, put on promos and just put over the fact that he is the champion. That's not going to devalue the championship at all. No, I don't think so. I, I, I agree, but I do think as well that Barrett's had the belt on a few occasions now and he hasn't really... He hasn't really elevated it that much, but I think that's just because of bad booking again, to be honest. It comes back to that. And they've only yeah. really started that, you know, that process of pushing this belt recently. So hopefully, like you say, if he does pick it up, they continue with this momentum and they don't just back off because Brian's gone. Who would you put him up against though, going forward, if Brian was to be wrought off TV? I'd probably put him in a few with Neville. Yeah, because, because I, I can see that. Yeah, because if Neville then st- steals the belt one one week, doesn't that obviously not steal it? But if he if he wins the belt, uh, you imagine that crowd reaction. That's that's that, what you want. That'd be amazing to see that. I mean, it it's kind of opposite to what they're doing at the moment now, where they're putting the established names as the champion. But I could totally see Neville picking up the title and then it being okay with that because the the reactions that he's had, it's just been amazing to see. What would be weird is that that in a continental belt, but then it would be right in a way. If you do you start bringing up the NXT guys a little bit more, you start getting your Finn Balor come up and stuff. That in a continental belt could have a real pool of great competition. You could almost not use it as a as a cruiserweight belt, but you, you, that that talent there is all credible to be in that mix. And I think you know that's that that really what that belt is for. It's that middle belt. So. Yeah, well, I think some of the promos leading in WrestleMania where they talked about the prestige of the Intercontinental Championship, it was about the matches that were for that belt always stealing the show. And I think if you've got someone in there like Neville, then that's going to put you in that scenario where the match is able to steal the show, especially if he's given someone to work with that is going to put on um, the same kind of fast-paced, high-flying match. And kind of like you said, like the Cruiserweight Championship matches used to be, they're always fast-paced classic encounters so if if they brought up some more nxt talent i think maybe that would work better but there's not too many people on the roster i think that could put on that kind of match but then again every single match that he's had so far against different kinds of people i think it's all went down really well it has it has it's it's, it's all it's all good for neville he's on the up for sure so uh, you know hopefully if if it does go down this route then maybe he's going to be in line for the ic belt but if you're going prediction-wise, uh, Brian or Barrett, what are you going to go with? I'm going to go with Barrett. You're going to go with Barrett. I mean, I would say because of the injury stuff that we've all found out about recently, it could be likely that he's going to drop this belt if, if the match does go ahead. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Barrett as well. Next up, and we're on to the, the you know, we're almost at the end of this one, but we're, we're you know, we've got one uh, to go before the main event, and that is John Cena um, up against Rusev. And this is a Russian chain match, which I'm sure we've kind of mentioned it. Um, we, we don't really get it, to be honest. It's the chain gang versus the Russian chain. But uh, it's, it's for the US title. Uh, Cena's been a very good champion. I think that Cena's done a great job at elevating this belt, loving the US Open Challenge. And Rusev has ducked in and out as this challenge has progressed. And obviously leading to him uh, uh, choking or put, well, the accolade with the chain. Um, and and um, um, Rusev's been made to look like a, a really good heel like you know when we've said in the past that WWE don't like doing all the cheap heel tactics well they have used them with guys like Rollins and and Rusev so it's looked good for Rusev this it has yeah I like the way they sort of gone into this it's it's completely different from what we've seen before where he was going in and squashing everyone so now his matches are a little longer they're not as one-sided as they used to be and he's still finding ways to sort of get by and Going into this match with Cena, I think I don't really know what to expect in terms of how the match will progress because it's one of them awkward ones like we touched on before when we said, you know, you're going to be limited with the chain in there, especially if it's the chain where they're tied to each other and it's not just the chain in there as a weapon to use because it limits the move sets, it's lim- limiting the moves that you can actually pull off. And then the whole touching the turnbuckle thing to win the match, it's it's just something that Personally, I don't like to see it's. It kind of just feels like a, I don't know, a kind of cheap way to win a match, especially when it's something that's got so much animosity between. Well, I would say the two of them, but it's more on Rusev's side because Cena's such a nice guy, you wouldn't get involved in that. But 
Yeah, I, I don't know how it'll go down. I'd have personally rather have seen um, a Judy Bagwell on a pole match, to be honest. Who won a pole? Judy Bagwell. Ah. Did you okay. never see that match? I didn't, no. You never saw that? Judy Bagwell on a pole, WCW days? I've never seen it. It sounds YouTube, quite awkward. Y- YouTube it. Everybody out there, we talkers, YouTube it. Judy Bagwell on a pole. Did they have to get her off the pole to win the match? or YouTube it, you'll find out. I shall. I'll check it out. <laughs> Well, back to the match at hand. Uh, this, yeah, uh, like you said, it's 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 a it's a it's a it's a stipulation that kind of ruins the match uh, because we've had kind of two decent-ish matches with these two, and uh, this one it probably isn't going to be as good as them. Um, like I say, gimmick uh, provided has done that definitely. Um, I, see how soon they're going to hit the springboard stunner. Uh, that's a good question. Can he really hit it anyway, though? Not necessarily, no, to be honest. He, He'll he, probably botch it, but it'll just look as though it usually does. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I think this one's probably going to be the weakest out of their matches that they've had, but I also think as well that it could be the final, the final part of this feud for them to go their separate ways. I think that Cena will keep the belt now because I think that Cena is the guy to elevate it, and I don't think the Cena... Um, the US Open challenge that he's got is done. I think this has got a real good uh, momentum about it, defending that week after week. And I really do think that if if he keeps doing that, you're going to get these surprises and the belt. To be honest, this could make this belt amazing. It's made it good, and I think it could make it amazing. So I, I, I'm invested in the Cena gimmick taking the belt forward, and I think that means that it's curtains for Rusev. But I think that. Rusev will be put over in a way that he doesn't look too weak. Um, and I think then it opens the door for Rusev to go and ignite another feud. Again, probably name that thrown in the mix. I know I've mentioned quite a few times in feuds, but Roman Reigns, another decent one for him to feud with. Yeah, I think Reigns could be a good choice for him going forward. I mean, I agree with you. I see it. Cena will win this match. And the way that he's elevated the belt with the open challenge, I think that's something that I've really enjoyed. Because... It makes you look out for that match just to see who the opponent's going to be. So you're kind of looking forward to seeing the US title match where if you think before Cena had the title, then you would never really say that. But just the fact of not knowing who the opponent's going to be, it's something that I'm really enjoying. So you could get all these different kind of names rocking up. So going forward, I'd love to see Cena keep the belt for the time being. Maybe it could say like Rusev cost him the match and cost him the title further down the line to take it off Cena. Yeah. But I, I don't know if this would be the last match. I think maybe it could go on maybe another match from here. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, the only reason why I think that is because WWE don't like to outdo the amount of matches that they have. But like I say, I mean, if they, as long as they don't cheapen it and they weaken it, because, I mean, like you say, this is a chain match, which kind of weakens this a little bit. But as long as they try and make sure they keep it steady and consistent, then that'll be fine. Um, so my prediction is going to be John Cena. What about you? Yeah, I'm going to go Cena too. Cena as well. So final match of the evening, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match between Seth Rollins versus Randy Orton in a steel cage with the Guardians of the Galaxy, Kane. That's right, isn't it? It is, yeah. Good, I thought so. So <laughs> we've obviously got Kane hanging around outside the ring. J&J security are going to be outside the ring. Um... I'm presuming Joe and Jay Security are going to scale the cage, trying to get in the cage. I'm presuming that Kane's going to stop them from getting in the cage. And then I'm thinking that Kane's going to look like he's going to stitch up Randy Orton and ultimately then do what's best for business. And that will be the end of this match. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to expect to see, really. I mean, Joe and Jay is bound to get involved and try and get in the cage at some point. But I think, like you've just said, I think it could be that Kane ultimately does what is best for business. Like Triple H said on, I think it was Raw, where he says, like, that's always what Kane does. So it'll look like he's maybe going to screw Rollins over and then Orton's going to get the win. But I think we'll see him just take out Orton at that point and help Rollins get the victory. But again, going forward, I don't know where it goes from here because I think maybe it's played its part so far. Well, it was just a filler, wasn't it? Because they didn't have anyone 
really there. Like, well, they did, they did. That's not actually that's that's wrong. They 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 did. They had Roman Reigns there. Roman Reigns is, was was ready for his match um, with Seth Rollins, but they 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 held back on it. Um, and taking Lesnar out of the picture, then Orton was the only choice really to continue with. Um, yeah, it's it's difficult for Randy Orton this because where does Randy go from here? He, I can't see or, um, Rollins dropping the belt, so. Uh, you can't keep going on with this RKO stuff. I mean, yes, you can keep hitting it out of nowhere, but I, I like what they've done with Randy Orton. I like this version of Orton. It's it's back to that old, you know, he strikes, the Viper strikes. That's good. But um, it's not a lot else to it. There's not a lot else for Orton to do for this feud. He's he's kind of humiliated Seth in weeks. He's already taken down J&J a few times. He's RKO'd the hell out of everybody. He's mixed up with the authority. He's done all the stuff that I think he can do with this area, and I think he now needs to branch out, which again, and I know we've mentioned it, so we've kind of just said it so much, but Bray Wyatt. Yeah, it's, it's another possibility. I mean, Orton's, he's got to move on to something different after this, because I can't see him picking up the title. There's been so much put into Rollins, so I can see him holding this for quite a while. Um, if Kane costs him the match, I kind of see them going down the route of Orton against Kane again because it's something that we've seen before. Ooh, and it, it's just that point where, like quite a few of these different people on the roster now, there's so many, but you don't know what they can move on to from a match. Trouble is, is this is where if you had like your Cesaro pushed in the right way, he could be waiting in the wings for someone like this, and it, it's a perfect feud, isn't it? Like Orton Cesaro, real great way. I mean, when they fought round about Elimination Chamber time, Cesaro and Orton, they did a real great job. It's just like they just not marketed the right people to get him in position for these sort of things. So it's difficult for Randy. He's not at that age where you know he's you know he's he's not going to get always in the title picture, but you see him being up in that top area. But it's just who he gets partnered with. Yeah, I think if Bray Wyatt was to get involved in this match and Norton was the person that he was talking about, then that would work well because at least it puts them both on like something different at that point. And then Seth can go on to face someone else at like a Roman Reigns or something going forward. So maybe Bray Wyatt might be a better option to go with. As long as we don't see sort of Kane getting involved and then it becomes sort of maybe Kane and Seth Rollins next month or something like that. I could potentially see that happening, but again, it's not really the kind of match that I want to see. Yeah, they're teasing this sort of Kane turn. God knows what that's going to be like, for better, for worse. I mean, the only way I can ever see Kane getting good again is to go, you know, right back to the old days of heel, heel Kane, you know, mask and everything, the old original Kane. Uh, that's not going to happen anymore. I don't think Kane's got this, you know, he's he's quite well educated. He's all, He wants this whole... Um, creative side i think he's quite high up within the hierarchy in wwe they respect him a lot so i don't ever see him returning to that mask he might return to his his demon days but even that's a bit rubbish so uh, yeah but kane's been teased to do something but what that is as well is is kind of questionable so i don't really want to see a kane versus rollins feud or obviously triple h versus rollins yeah i totally agree i think kane's character has just been destroyed too much and I would prefer to see him go back to being a monster. He doesn't need the mask for it. Just like we said before, with like the way that the big show, like he should be a giant, he should be dominating people. Then Kane should be a monster and he should be dominating people as well. But again, another person on the roster because of the age, then you're not willing to invest so much in someone that's not going to be around for too much longer and they're not going to be the next champion and things like that. And I don't know, Kane's character's just being devalued so much with all the corporate stuff and things like that. It's completely different to what we were brought up on when Kane come in. And it, it kind of reminds me of sort of the way that Austin was sort of this huge rebel and things, and then they changed him and he was backstage playing the guitar and things. Yeah. And it's the same with Kane. It's just gone in a direction that you would not expect a couple of years ago. So, I don't know, it's hard to get him back on track because he's been devalued so much. But... I would still like to see him become the monster again, but I think it would be time for one last run for Kane and then maybe call it a day. Yeah, I'd have to agree. I, I've I've become so uninvested with the Kane character, although his line about El Torito was pretty good on Raw. I mean, uh, yeah, he's, he, he needs either a revamp or he just needs that one final run and then be done. Um, in terms of the match, 
I think it'll probably be quite a good match. But again, that gimmick problem, cage cage matches, I mean, they're probably going to be a few big spots in it. Um, will we see a curb stomp? I don't know. But um, it, yeah, I, I, I'm going to go with Rollins. It's kind of obvious. I'm going to go Rollins to win via RKO. Oh, so you think he'll just get so peed off with everything that he'll hit him with an RKO? No, I think Rollins will hit him. Oh, RKO. oh. oh. Well, he, need, he needs a new finisher, doesn't he? Great point. He's <laughs> stealing the RKO. Very nice. It's been banned, but is it banned from Rollins using it or is it just Orton using it? That's a good point. I didn't think of that. I didn't think of that. Maybe, maybe. So Rollins via RKO. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. So that kind of brings us to a close of our Extreme Rules preview. Um, I've only got one quick other subject. Just want to touch on this before we go off of We Talk. Um, Chris Jericho has had a hell of a lot of, of, of heat recently from numerous sources. Taz's podcast, Taz has been bashing him left, right, and center, saying, you know, uh, we're just kind of just taking like these little digs little slight digs at, at Jericho. And then you've got the issues with people not liking him because of Tough Enough, um, or not Tough Enough, because uh, the podcast that he's taken over from Stone Cold Steve Austin, he could very well be the trainer on Tough Enough if, if they want to do anything with him. And and saying he's pretty much become this sort of corporate stooge. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's been not a good time for Jericho in terms of the, the, the reception for him. And I don't really get it. I don't think it's warranted. I think, you know, if you're offered all these opportunities, you take them. You know, he's not he's not a wrestler anymore. He wants to do different things, wants to branch out. Um, where's the need for all the hate? Well, that's the thing. He's getting quite a lot of hate recently. I don't know if it's really deserved, though. I think it's just a case of people backlashing because Austin's been taken away from the podcast and Jericho has come in to replace him. And, you know, maybe it's kind of like the same thing with Brian being taken away from WrestleMania and putting someone else in there like Roman Reigns. People just seem to give out that backlash to that new person because they don't want that change in there. So maybe part of it with the Stone Cold thing is because of that change. So I think maybe next week when Jared goes live again, this time with Stephanie McMahon, then maybe people might change sort of depend on the questions that he asks because I think a lot of it was directed towards the C9 interview and the questions that he was asking. So maybe if he goes all out in this next one, it might change some opinions on that. But a lot of this sort of reaction that he's been getting and the negativity, I think a lot of it's unwarranted. Yeah, I completely agree. I think it's going to be interesting to see how he does approach that Stephanie McMahon. One. I don't think he's going to change his style. I think he'll just be him and have the conversation like he did because um, I think it's unwarranted. I think people were saying, well, why, why he could, you know, he didn't, he didn't ask the questions that need to be asked with Cena. I think he did. I just think he didn't do it in the way that Austin does. He doesn't, you know, quick fire him. He doesn't need to do that. He likes to phrase him in a certain way. No problem. It's his approach. Um, but it's in, it's weird. I mean, Jericho's always been a fan favourite, but coming out of everything, you know, you've, we've got Kevin Nash as well, Scott Hall bashing him. They never saw the eye to eye from the WCW days, so they're flipping off about him. Taz flipping about. I don't know what he's done to Taz. I think Taz just jealous of, jealous of his podcast. But there you go. Um, but yeah, so much heat towards Jericho at the moment. So. I wanted to just quickly mention it, um, and I want you guys to to tell me what you think of that. Do you think Jericho deserves the heat that he's getting at the moment? And obviously, I want you guys as well to give us your Extreme Rules predictions. So via the comment section below, just let us know what you think, and let us know your views on the match matches and build of this Extreme Rules pay-per-view. Have you been hacked off with the gimmicks? Um, are you a bit tired of the authority? Sounds like I'm trying to sell something here, but I'm really not. Um, but let us know via the comments box below your thoughts on all things Extreme Rules. So, Paul, uh, have you got any sort of plugs this week? Um, just in terms of Extreme Rules, if you want to submit your predictions, you can head over to smacktalks.org forward slash predictions and submit yours. And then I'll post the results on Monday just to see how you do. Cool, cool. Definitely go and do that. Check that out. And uh, also as well, don't forget tonight, we've got uh, another episode of Saturday Night Main Event. So be sure to check my channel at 8 p.m. UK time and you can see the new episode and the fallout from my Extreme Rules pay-per-view. And if you haven't seen that already, be sure to go watch it because there is quite a lot of fallout. So that kind of brings us to the end of another We Talk. And Paul, you are going to be back next week. I am. You are. And uh, I don't know if Weeds will be back next week. He will be uh, ducking in and out. Um, but, I mean, he's having so much fun with Mike Tanay and Adam Rose at the moment. Who knows when he'll return? 
Why would he want to? <laughs> Why would he want to? Uh, so, Paul, uh, do you want to say goodbye to everybody? Catch you later. Yes, indeed. Enjoy Extreme Rules and let us know your views on it. This is Delzinski and Smack Talks signing out. Hi, wrestling fans and gamers. Velvet Sky here, and I just want to say I've been hearing a rumor that Delzinski.com is the best place for video gaming and wrestling content. Now, if you're a wrestling fan and a hardcore gamer like myself, then I suggest you check out Delzinski.com. You will not be disappointed. Holler!